Hello friends, Steve again. The sun is shining today and the wind is blowing so I'm having to use a different setup to try to avoid the static which means I'm looking directly into the sun but for all of its light it's not generating much warmth. It's another nippy day in southern Illinois. Happy Thanksgiving. For those of you here in the United States, we just finished celebrating Thanksgiving and all that it means to us. Time to look back over the past year and remember the blessings that we've had. It's also a time that we get together as families and eat a big meal, have a feast. COVID has kind of disrupted things for us this last two years, majorly. Um, <clears throat> Family-wise, we've been isolated and uh, separated. Our economies are stumbling, even here in the United States. Food prices are rising and Foods that used to be readily available started to come in short supply. And other things. Okay. <clears throat> but no place has the disruption been as evident in my life as it has been at church. People who I used to see several times a week have completely disappeared from my life and me from theirs. And as the pandemic continues to surge back and forth across the world, many of us are asking, where do we go from here? Now, I recognize that many churches um, have made this an issue of freedom and have sought to exercise their freedom to be open regardless of whether COVID was active in the community. But many churches have not. Many churches have chosen to put safety first. But it has forced all of us to face the question, what is the meaning of church? What is the purpose of church? Now, it just so happens that the Discover Guide that I was studying in preparation for today was all about church. So let's look at that question. What, what, does the, what is church? Well, I would propose that church at its core is a calling. And there are three callings that are usually recognized within Christianity. There is the calling of the message. There is the calling to be pilgrims and yeah i can't keep three things in my hand there's the calling to be servants okay what is the message of the church well i'm going to speak from my personal experience so as a seventh day adventist the message of seventh day adventists is the warning that christ is returning soon that the end of the world is at hand and that we need to prepare for that event by living lives that bring forth fruit, meat for repentance, to use the King James Version of John the Baptist's words, to live our lives in obedience to the commandments of God. Now, on the surface of this, this message doesn't seem to be that earth-shattering. But it's very unpopular, actually. <clears throat> it's unpopular with humanists because it declares that mankind cannot solve their problems. That this trajectory that we see of catastrophe, of humanity destroying the earth, is unstoppable. And that man cannot save themselves. Despite all of our scientific wonders and all of our advancements, we still are on a trajectory towards self-destruction. 
and the only solution is God. <clears throat> now the message is also unpopular with many Christians because the call to keep the commandments of God brings us face to face with the fact that most Christians ignore the Ten Commandments. They either have been taught that they don't apply to their lives or they've been taught to pick and choose. Not just the Sabbath, but many Christians are taught that bowing down to images is okay. That may not be you, but many Christians are taught that. And when you look at how we live our lives with infidelity and criminal behavior and lying and cheating and stealing and disrespect for parents, we don't live our lives in, in obedience to the, the Ten Commandments. So John the Baptist's call to repentance that was sounded out so forcefully before Christ's first coming is the message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to Christianity in preparation for Christ's second coming. The calling to be pilgrims is not popular either even among Adventists. You see, a pilgrim has no settled resting place, no permanence. A pilgrim is temporary, always in transition. And none of us humans like to be in transition. We want a sense of permanence, of significance, of meaning. And so Christians are much more excited about the kingdom than they are about the pilgrimage. Just like the disciples, we want God to set up his kingdom now. And so Christianity is, is rife with movements seeking to do just that. Okay. To wrest political control from the heathen, the non-Christians, the secular, and to enforce Christian standards on others through secular, through civic means. The Adventist message is that we are pilgrims and aspiring to rule over other people. Well, it's becoming like the world. It's becoming like the dragon. And that, in essence, is, in our understanding, what the mark of the beast is, seeking to exert dominion over others especially when it comes to religious observance. So the, call, the message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church of Christ's soon return, eminent, the eminent destruction of this world, the call to repentance and living lives of obedience to the commandments of God, the call to be pilgrims rather than kings on this earth, Those are unpopular messages. Now the call to be a servant, on the face of it, Christians seem to embrace. We have accepted the social gospel that we're to serve others. But frankly, most of the time we serve them from a position of looking down. Taking care of. A servant doesn't look that way. A servant is looking upwards in respect and honor and obedience. And Christianity as a whole generally does not experience that as in what they call service ministries. But a calling, whether it be the, the messenger, messenger or the servant or the pilgrim, a calling is not complete. A church is not complete if it has accepted a calling unless there is a body of people who have drawn together to form a spiritual community. And the church as a spiritual community is committed to helping its members find union with God through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, through the transformation of their lives by God's presence within. church as a spiritual community is characterized by love. Jesus 
told his disciples, by this will all men know my know that you are my disciples, that you have become my disciples if you love one another. The church is a spiritual community, it's a beautiful place. It's inclusive, it, it's easy to come into, and it welcomes people with open arms. But if we stop there, if a welcoming, open community, it's very easy for us to lack purpose, lack structure, and frankly, to become divided amongst ourselves, to start squabbling over things. There are two other aspects of what it means to be a church that are critical for church to fulfill its role in our lives, to become the touchstone in our lives that it was in the lives of the people in the Bible. One of those aspects is the church as sacrament. Now, sa sacrament is a word that today we don't use in regular English. It's only applied in religious settings. It actually comes from Latin sacramentum, which was a solemn oath. A sacramentum was a solemn oath between parties. During medieval times, that word was adopted by translators to uh, translate the Greek mysterion, mystery, which was a euphemism that was used by Paul to talk about the Lord's Supper and some of the other rituals of Christianity. And so sacrament came to be equivalent to these religious rituals. I'll never forget the aha moment for me that came when I was reading C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity and he was describing his personal take on Christianity and in it he said that when we partake of the Lord's Supper yes we know we're partaking of a symbol of Christ's body and of his blood that was shed for us. It's a symbol that helps us to remember Christ's sacrifice for us. But in his words, we Christians also believe that as we partake of these symbols, God actually comes into our body and becomes one of us. That, that concept was just an aha for me. I mean, I'd, I'd experienced the Lord communion as this in this symbolic fashion but the idea of it having a functional aspect the symbol and a reality that it had played in my life that was new to me you know here in the United States we have a symbol which also serves this like a sacrament uh, it's the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor statue of a woman holding up a torch <clears throat> and for almost 50 years that symbol was what immigrants saw as they came in by ship into New York Harbor which was the busiest immigration port in the United States but that symbol also had a functional aspect because right next to Liberty Island where Statue of Liberty is, is Ellis Island. And so the Statue of Liberty is towering over the Ellis Island complex, which was where immigrants were processed. They were screened for disease, their passports were checked, they were checked for their qualification for becoming a part of the United States, of entering America. This functional and, and symbolic aspect is a very real part of what it means of the meaning of church. The church is a symbol of God's desire to be with man, his desire to bring us together, his unity with us. It's also a symbol of his desire for us to be one, to be not be divided. unless the church takes a solemn oath to be that symbol, to be that function of unity, 
we fail at being churches. And the fourth aspect is something that is really unpopular here in the United States. The church as institution. Institution? We don't like institutions. For me, that brings up, uh, you know, harmonics of mental institutions where people get locked up forever. Okay? But it also brings up the institutions of government, law enforcement, the courts, okay? Uh, and in today's environment, um, big business, big corporations, global corporations are institutions. Now, at its core, institutions are permanent elements within a society or a community or a nation that perform necessary functions. Permanence is the key here. We started with pilgrims. We're ending with permanence. And we'll get there, okay? They're not in conflict. Okay. But an institution achieves permanence by having structure, organization, rules, financial support, and by meeting a need that engenders that support. You know, our little church here in Fairfield has become littler during the COVID pandemic. We have gone from eight down to four. Some have died, some have moved away. And some have just stopped coming because of the challenges that COVID has created. And we are asking ourselves the question of what the meaning of church is at a very personal level. A hundred years ago, Wayne County, the county that Fairfield is in, had two Seventh-day Adventist churches, both of which were large enough to support an elementary school, not a big one, but to support a teacher and an elementary school. When my wife and I moved here in the 80s, those churches were long gone. But every time the local library had a book sale, we would find Seventh-day Adventist books out for sale in the public library that had been donated to the church, donated to the library, but were duplicates of what they already had on their shelves. Because the members of those churches, which were no longer in existence, had been active seed sowers. They had sold books door to door, spreading the message of their church and inviting people to join their spiritual communion. And those books were still showing up in library sales 10, 20, 30 years ago. Permanence versus pilgrim. We have to understand that our position in a community is entirely dependent on three things. Is the message that we are sharing with the community drawing together a spiritual community out of that community? that larger community. In other words, are people accepting the message? If they are not accepting the message, if they do not feel that the message calls them out, calls them to form a, to join a unique spiritual community, then the church has no existence. The second, if the members of that spiritual community are not committed to living lives that are a sacrament 
a, both a symbol and a function of their calling within the community, then the church has no meaning. And thirdly, if the church does not invest in training its members, and if the members do not a step forward into positions of responsibility, into pr actively supporting the church in its mission, in its message, then the church has no permanence and will disappear. Now, all of this has been cerebral today. I didn't have any, you know, personal uh, story to share with you, except what I'm going through as we struggle to understand why our numbers have dwindled. And it's a two-way street. We can look at the community and say, well, they didn't listen to our message. Or we can look at ourselves and say, has my life been the witness that it should have been? And that's the question that I would like to leave with you. Many Christians today feel that belonging to a church is optional and that church is a place you go because it feels right, feels good. I'd like to suggest to you that church is much, much more than an experience. It is a calling. It is a community. It is a sacrament and it is an institution to be supported and upheld. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. I hope to join you again next week.